Good day, YouTube. This is 10 minutes that I cut out of my last video. It's good stuff. It just slowed the overall video down. And you know what? Added runtime that really wasn't needed. If you guys want to watch this, there's great stuff in it. If not, if you want to skip it and just move on with the hand, doesn't hurt my feelings. Anyways, guys, here's the video. I hope you enjoy. Let us begin. So as always, create new. We're gonna go to our parts design. First thing, create a body. And then from this body, we're gonna look at making a sketch. We're gonna work off the top plane today. And I wanna show you this really cool thing first. I actually found this out only about a couple hours ago and I'm gonna use it for as many things as I can. If you draw, say, two circles, and of course we're uh, making sure they're constrained to the center here. Now I have two circles right here. If I give them all a radius, let's give one a radius here, the outside one. And I'll just click OK, and now we'll give the second one a radius as well. Now, a lot of times I don't really, I might not know what the outer size is. But I might know the, uh, but I, so I might not know the outer size that I want, but I might know the wall thickness, especially when I'm 3D printing. Usually I want the wall to be 1.2 millimeters. So I don't want the difference between this guy and this guy to be 1.2 millimeters, but I don't want to have to change both every time I make a change. So here's a cool trick. If you click on your um, dimension here and you go to the diameter you can click function now if you notice over here on our constraints tab you can see constraint one two three and four well number th and you'll see their dimensions so our big circle is constraint number three so this is where things get a little tricky but fun I want uh, if I want to match my inside to the outside, I can simply type constraints. Now in brackets, if I type a constraint number here, starting at zero, so zero, one, two, three, I know I want number two is the one I want to reference. So I go two, I can see that dimension just popped in. 73.84 so i want that minus 1.2 now anytime you see something like that unit mismatch what it's really saying is i don't know what uh, you're working with so i'm subtracting millimeters from what units add mm and now you can see i'm 1.2 millimeters smaller so if i click ok now Anytime I set this dimension, so we'll go 10 millimeters, the inside, the inside will be 8.8. .8. Isn't that a cool trick? So that's one way we can make our hand and you and apply dimensions from one thing and make the others relative to that dimension. But you know what? That's still not my favorite way of doing things. I'll show you an even better way. Let's just close this here for now. Instead of working in part design, go to spreadsheet and inside spreadsheet, click create new spreadsheet. You will you now see a spreadsheet. Well, if I close off this tab here, just close off my start page, double click to start my spreadsheet. And I'm just going to go to windows tile. So now I have my spreadsheet on one side. And I have my drawing on the other side. I can actually type in dimensions to my spreadsheet. So let's go for A1. And in A1, I'll type 10 millimeters. And in A2, I'll type 8 millimeters. So then once I go back to the sketch, 
edit sketch i can now this is our outside so for my outside i can actually type go back to functions spreadsheet dot a1 and you'll see a1 pop up it has to be a capital or it won't work hit okay hit okay and that will set it to 10 millimeters let's just give it this on a diameter here on our second one click here spreadsheet a2 and now i jump to eight millimeters the cool thing about doing it this way is if i go back in here and i want to change it to 12 millimeters you can't uh, there, there's a little bug here or won't change it unless you're uh, outside the sketch that i always forget so i'll just change it to 20 millimeters here to show you that it actually works and you can see that updating in real time so that's a cool way of doing things but wait there's more it gets even better i cannot for the life of me remember all of these numbers which ones go where you know what i might open this document a year from now and i kind of want to know what the numbers are so let's just work over here i'll just uh, highlight here let's change color our this is your text color this is your background color so i like what i like to do is i like to gray it out to let me know i'm working on something so let's say this is my circle demo whatever after that let's just change everything to black white so i'll give these you can give them a name so i like to type in the name like let's say outer or circle outer diameter circle inner diameter so then i'll change my dimensions here to be let's say let's make it let's turn this back to 10 millimeters and we'll make this one five millimeters so now what i can do is i can click on this and i'll just copy this and if i click here you see how it says alias paste it in there and hit enter once you hit enter this will go yellow and i'll do the same for here copy here paste here and this is what always gets me i'll click off of it and nothing will happen so you want to type it in hit enter once it turns yellow it's there so now if i go back to the sketch edit my sketch i'll go into my inner first and now i can type spreadsheet dot and i'll type in circle and i can see my inner diameter click ok and it makes it five millimeters and now our inner diameter or outer diameter spreadsheet dot circle and outer diameter okay 10 millimeters puts it in and of course we can do equations here as well so i could say for instance equals a1 and you have to use a capital if you want to reference a cell plus a2 and you can tell it's going to make it 28 millimeters because a1 and a2 equals 28 and then when i go back to here of course i have to close off the sketch you could see that's changed and Again, if I change this to 10 millimeters, so we're going to recalculate to 18 and change this size. So that's just a cool way of referencing things. And it's a nice, easy way of referencing things throughout sketches. So if I went back to this part, for instance, if I, uh, if I wanted to do something strange here, so I'll go okay you have to go back to part let's go back to part design here and now let's say i want to pad this out 
I'll pat it out. I'll make it 10 millimeters. I can hear same thing. I can leave it at 10 millimeters or I can hit. So here's another thing. Anywhere you see a function, you could do this. So if I click function here and I go 10 millimeters instead of 10 millimeters, I can say spreadsheet dot a1. Okay. And if, well, that since it's the same one, say so it happens to be the same preset, you know, it didn't, it made it 10 millimeters. But now if I go in here, if I change 10 millimeters to 30, not only does it make it wider, it also makes it taller. Very cool. So let's just restart off at the, uh, back at the beginning, uh, start off with a fresh new sketch, and we'll actually move on to making our Lego man. Should I have left this in the video? Do you like this B-roll footage? Let me know down in the comments. You know what? Give me a like if you liked it. Give me a dislike if you didn't like it. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Honestly, any interaction helps out YouTubers. That's a secret that they don't want you to know. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great night. Stay smart. Stay safe.